Hi, my name is Frank Washcook. I'm the news editor of PR Week, and I'm here with John Skipper. He is the president of ESPN, and he just got off stage from doing a Q&A with our editor-in-chief, Steve Barrett, here at the PR Week conference. Uh, so one thing you talked a lot about mm -hmm. during the Q&A was how you're getting into new forms of media, ESPN3, mm -hmm. ESPN On Demand, mm -hmm. the apps. Uh, how do you make the decision of what sort of media you're going to get into and what you're going to uh, avoid? Mm -hmm. our, our general philosophy is that we want to adapt all new media, all new technologies, we'll grow share and we'll figure out how to make money afterwards. And we have the great luxury of being able to do that. But of course, given our brand and sort of where we stand with fans, what we don't want to do is allow someone else to establish first mover advantage in a new media or new technology. So we're, we want to be first movers. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I've noticed is that while you've gotten into producing content a lot more quickly, mm -hmm. you know, your reporters tweet, uh, things get onto the website a lot quicker. Uh -huh. Um, at the same time, you're doing more long-form stuff. You're mm -hmm. doing documentaries. Um, why did ESPN decide that that was also going to be a good idea? Well, I think we do like to zag sometimes when other people are zigging. And I don't think, despite the new technologies and all the great new forms of media that are short and quick, uh, I do think people still want to hear stories. Right. And to tell stories, you need length and you need time. And so we started Grantland so we could tell long stories. We started E60. So we could do long features. We've outside the lines. We continue to tell long form stories, 30 for 30 documentaries, and all of those have resonated with people. We've had good viewership. I don't think that when something new happens, it nextly necessarily obviates the desire, the need for the old. So we try to do both. The one thing you just talked to Steve about was uh, you're a content creator. You're mm -hmm. also a news organization. Uh -huh. How do you balance the two? Well, I think we try to balance them by understanding what we're doing everywhere, right? We're in the business of contracting with rights holders for the rights to do their games, and we do those games. We do studio shows that talk about the leagues and the games, and then we have a separate news and information group that operates independently and has the purview or has and has the ability to tackle any story they want to tackle without interference from our business relationships. Now, I'm a big college basketball fan, went uh -huh. to a small school, not on TV all uh -huh. the time, so ESPN3 is, is uh -huh. great for a lot of mm -hmm. people like me. What do you see is happening next, like along those same lines, that uh, is going to bring more content to more people? Look, one of the things that uh, ESPN throughout its history has done is pay attention to what fans want and try to provide more and more of the sports content they want, and we've generally found that the appetite that for that is pretty insatiable. You went to a small college, you want to see the your team's games. So we're going to put them on ESPN3. The same thing's going to happen with other sports. Obviously, college football, college basketball lead the way, but I think you're going to see more women's volleyball and more tennis. Uh, and ESPN3 gives us the place where we can put an infinite amount of live events. And, and our, uh, our intention is to try to push as close to infinity as possible. John, thanks again. Again, this is Frank Washcook. I'm the news editor of PR Week, and I'm here with John Skipper. He is the president of ESPN. Thanks again, John. Thank you, Frank.